Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of Call Me Crafty Owl here on the Scrapping for Less channel with some inspiration using the latest and final Flavor of the Month card kit by Scrapping for Less. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Scrapping for Less channel, I hope by the end of this video you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. For today's card, I'm going to be using collection number four, which is Wildflowers from the November 2020 Flavor of the Month card kit. Now the kit is sold out, but if you did purchase one, this will be great inspiration for you. And if you didn't get to purchase one, but you end up liking the layout of the card, you can use stuff that you already have on hand. One of my favorite types of cards to make are clear cards. I use what I call clear cardstock for the card base, and then basically just build up a normal card around that. Now if you do have any questions about clear cardstock or what I use, I will link the video from my channel in the description box below where I have a little clear card Q&A. If I do leave you with any other questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll come back and check in on those and answer you. Let's get crafty! I realized that I did not turn the camera on, but luckily all you missed was me cutting the green pattern paper to four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall, and then I cut that butterfly paper to three and a quarter inches wide. I cut the height of this piece to four and a half inches, and then I brought in that striped scrap of pattern paper, cut it to four and a quarter inches wide, and then I think I cut it down to two and a half inches tall. I end up changing this later. Next, I brought in one of the scraps from cutting down the green paper. This will end up being a border on the top and bottom of the striped piece. I cut this to four and a quarter inches wide and I leave the height as is for now. Next, I'm going to cut the white cardstock for my inner card. This will end up being the same size as the butterfly pattern paper. I cut this to nine inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide, and then it got folded in half. And finally, I brought in the clear cardstock for my card base. This got cut in half to four and a quarter inches wide, and then folded down for a top fold card base. Now that most of the cutting was done, I could start to put the card together. The first thing I did was add adhesive to the back of the green pattern paper. You do want to be careful before you push this down completely that it is in there nicely because once that adhesive sticks to the clear cardstock, it is stuck. Once that was in place, I added the floral paper to my inner card and then this got added to the inside center of the card. I brought in my scallop border punch, an oldie but trusted tool, and I put a decorative edge on both sides of this green piece of paper. Once the decorative edge was added, I brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer, measured the width of this green piece now, and I cut that in half. Once that was done, I put my striped paper up against the front of my card, and I realized that this was probably a little too high or too thick for the card front. So I brought back in that trimmer again and trimmed it down to just a little over two inches. Once that was done, I added adhesive to the top and bottom on the back of this piece, and then I placed those two strips of green paper on both sides. I like the way that this helps separate the striped paper from that butterfly pattern paper and it brings some of that inner pattern paper to the front of the card. To finish the card, I'm going to create a little embellishment cluster for the focal point on the front. The first thing I did was put a fishtail end in each of the pattern paper strips. 
and then I put these three pieces of pattern paper together. Once I thought I had a nice little layout, I brought in my stapler and stapled those together. At this point, I realized that those would be too wide for the card front, so I adjusted a little bit, and then I made an X in those pattern papers. This way, they'll stay together better and stay in the place I want them. You'll see there I cut off the excess on the left, and now I'm going to start building this. I decided a good place for the little strips and I adhered those down with my ATG. Now the stapled part, it does pop up off that card quite a bit, so I knew that when I placed my little hello embellishment that I would need some extra dimension to put that down. So I brought in some mini foam dots, put three on the back, and placed this right over where that staple X was. Then I brought in one of the butterflies and a sentiment from the ephemera and placed those down. The sentiment was just flat down onto the card strips and I used some more foam on that butterfly. I decided to use a little trio of ephemera images, so I brought in another butterfly, added some foam dots to this, and here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this quick and easy clear card using some scrapping for less goodies. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye.